is uh, talking about the on arrival question. So just a, a short share of what the what do you see as uh, some benefits of empathy? It's also part of the chapter that later on we'll be talking more about. Uh, he, he talks about some benefits. And so for me, uh, it's, um, there's kind of different categories, uh, uh, ways of sorting the benefits for who. So there's the benefits for the speaker and for myself as a speaker when I feel heard and kind of a reflection. Uh, I feel more at ease because I don't have to fight for attention, you know, having grown a, up in a family where you had to kind of fight a little bit for attention. So I feel uh, calmer, relaxed. Um, my feelings open up. And I remember uh, one person that I listened to once, I uh, said, oh, I've never been heard so deeply. I never felt so creative. You know, it's just so opening up. You just kind of can bring forth and there's this feeling of openness and creativity uh, for myself as a listener I feel more present and engaged uh, because I tend to uh, disconnect you know go in my head and if I have if I'm listening reflecting I feel like I'm uh, present and so it keeps keeps me actually more present and then I also can enjoy the unfolding of what the person is saying so their experience I get a lot of uh, benefit or enjoyment just from the hearing. Uh, for a community and culture, I think it heads off, solves all kinds of social problems. You know, it's the key to heading off social conflict and uh, resolving social conflict when it happens. And there's a site I had created of, uh, every time I find the benefit of empathy, I put it into this Google site and there's a link there if anybody wants to uh, see it at some point. So there's just a whole bunch of different benefits that we can tap into. And we can just go down, that was mine. So to go down the list, uh, Andrea, you're next on the list okay. here. Um, I found, you know, a genuine relief uh, to be heard and then also kind of altruistic feelings of allowing others to be heard, but also I'm interested in what they're saying. Another thing I find is the health benefits are amazing. If you look up the brain and how much stress and conflict can actually cause diseases in your body, such as like cancer or heart disease, there's been studies that show that when people that are less stressed or they actually have better health and they actually have longer lives. So if we could get on the track of empathy and I think it's very restorative. Um, even though you might hear stuff that you don't want to agree with, you're still giving that person their chance to speak. Okay, thanks. Uh, Dee Dee, you're, we're next here. Um, so empathy is complicated for me. Uh, empathy is, when you were talking Ed, about um, having people hear you and, and being really aware of the time that you were heard. And you know, it reminded me in so many of the conversation that I've had with others, and I've had this feeling too, that we don't get heard very often. Um, you know, people hear words, but they don't really hear what's underneath it. And that frustration around not getting heard then leads to anger and uh, you know all sorts of of other things on on top of that um, so to me it's really important now on the other side for me it's been a struggle for me to feel any emotions and i have um, recently stopped uh, psychiatric medications for the first time in more years than i even care to think about uh, because i was very tired of the side effects and and this feeling of being veiled all the time of having this disconnection and wondering if maybe that was playing a role in it and they're also very powerful um, i've been on them for a long time we don't have any long-term studies on these meds and i got very concerned um, and it it's taken a uh, a handful of months now for me to be able to fully feel my whole range of emotions and how uncomfortable that is. And, um, you know, I'm going to be an advocate here for a minute and get on my soapbox 
that my concern is that in taking medications, and not that I think they're bad or good or you know, whatever, they are what they are, um, and they're necessary for a lot of folks. One of the challenges I see with it is that it's often a Band-Aid. So instead of helping to teach me how to deal with feelings, uh, you know, to really embrace them, to fully um, immerse myself in them, learn for me what feelings are and how to cope with them. Um, instead, I was given medications. And so then I didn't feel, and so that kind of took care of it. And so I've acted as if for a long time, and I think I've had some emotions, don't get me wrong, it's, I'm not a psychopath, but, um, but there is some feelings of numbness that I had for a very long time. Uh, so I'm at the same time uncomfortable and looking forward to practicing the muscle um, more and getting back into it. I know I was an empathetic child um, and that got me into a lot of trouble, frankly, um, hence the medications. And so, you know, relearning how to embrace that and how to do it in a more healthy fashion, I'm looking forward to. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Daya? Yeah, for me, uh, I have learned that uh, being able to self-empathize, it really gave me a voice. There's, um, I, to, to be able to speak what my truths are. So, it, so and yeah, with, with practice I've, and being able to hold space for other people, um i find that it really helps in a lot of deep connection and and the ease with which people are able to um speak of what what their struggles are what their struggles are every day and and maybe even deeper trauma uh not maybe actually i have had experiences with some friends and building friendships where people have shared some deep trauma of their past and it's it's very difficult i've i've heard for them to share this with anybody unless it's uh, someone with uh, being able to just sit there with them with no agenda no ju judgments on what whatever they're sharing whatever they they've been through and just to hear them just, and that that kind of gives me a space also to be able to share what's deeply inside me. And it's even very recent where I was able to um, open up to a friend and say that I have been in my childhood and upbringing really looked at as this very strong person and and that I can take care of everything, but and it's just built up into a thing where I don't really share what's going on for me. Mm -hmm. And even after I started uh, learning NVC, I started becoming um, someone who people could share what they wanted, and I would really hold space for them. But it would be difficult for me to share what's happening with me. And, and I think slowly internally also, there was something that was really um, jarring. Like, like what I wanted to speak was not coming out. And, and I think as I had some other friends and who were willing to hold that space for me, it slowly started coming out that I built that trust to be able to say what's going on for me. So I think that's what it creates and when i see that when that can happen in a community it starts getting much easier for people to uh, be heard and share what's going on for them every day and then yeah the hope is that it can bring down the amount of violence that is there in the thank you uh, Denise? 
So um, I really uh, resonated with several things that that others said um, about this, but in my my thinking uh, or you know processing it and working it all all week about that the value of um, empathy for me personally has been the practice of it. And, and I'm having a really hard time separating this from my spiritual practice. It is totally, um, I have considered the, the whole act of reflective listening or developing accurate empathy as my, one of my primary spiritual practices for the last 20 years. So it is from that perspective. And I, I'm having a hard time thinking about how to, how to sort of secularize that because it's just not secular for me. And the, the deep, um, the capacity, building the capacity within myself over years of pra actively practicing it, that reflective space. And you mentioned the creativity, Edwin. It's like the, the being able to build my capacity for creating that space with another person to allow the creative my my creative juice and their creative juice to come together and the to allow into that mix all kinds of stuff but it requires so much of me that the the, the benefit of that space is that deep connection as you were mentioning Gaia that really that being able to perceive and sit in that deep connection with someone else and even if you're doing it with yourself, even if you're, when you're meditating, oftentimes you're perceiving that, that deep connection with your inner, your inner core, you know, not stuck up here on the, all this stuff on the surface, you're really connecting. So I think the real, the real value is creating that contemplative space uh, and it's a practice, and, and he mentions that in the book in this chapter, too, about how much this is a lifelong practice of being able to hold the space for um, and let go of and surrender your own, your own um, judgments, which we have all the time, our own judgments and our own, you know, uh, make our own considerations or even think anything about ourselves to sort of let it go to allow that joint space to emerge. And um, the, so the value to, for me or the real benefit of having that kind of space is that it promotes creativity, it promotes connection, it, prom it promotes a shift in perception about what, what it is that we're doing here, a, an alignment with a purpose much greater than ourselves and, um, that it it just increases the opportunities for that to happen that space does so mm -hmm. okay, thank you uh then uh the uh, next one deborah thank you so i too resonate with all that's been said um for me it it uh what really helped be sort of the access tool for me was um, uh, my mindfulness practice, which is a 40 year old practice, but I, I, I have honed it uh, much more um, from being an instructor and working with people with it in um, the past 14 years is that it really helps me understand what my experience is. And then, the second part of that is, can we hold it within ourselves in, in equanimity, which would be without judgment, you know, without extremes of his or hers or object or subject, you or me, and just hold that experience. And so first, can we do it with ourselves? And I wrote a little story about what just happened yesterday. I, I've been slowly getting upset about a situation and I I saw myself doing that. I backed off. I paused. You know, and this was over the course of several days. And then I uh, felt some opening and a relaxation about the issue because I was getting fairly worked up. I mean, I didn't say a word to anybody. It was all just my the story with me. And then I came to 
appreciate this other person's situation. And then it just disappeared. It dissipated, became a non-issue. So um, is that empathy? I, I'm thinking so. But had I not had the ability to understand what is this process I'm in, which was anger or um, distrust. I mean, there are a couple of words I could put, but I was worked up. If I can't understand that and be with it and look at the tools, if you will, to um, um, de-escalate from that, then I wouldn't have been able to get to this point of understanding. So I think it, I keep coming back to we can't become a culture of understanding. We can't connect with others unless we know what we're bringing to the table. And if we don't have that sense about ourselves, we're not grounded in that. We can't understand the benefit of slowing down to understand what is going on from here to our heart, the whole cycle of, you know, sort of CBT, you know, um, of your emotions, of your thinking affects your emotions, affects your behaviors, affects your results. So it really, it always starts with the end, with, all of us, the how many billions of people on the planet, their individual perspective. So um, that's one part. The other part is I remember um, when I was more involved in some NVC here in Seattle and some NVC groups is, and it's, I think it's a learning process and maybe those people learned better or more, I don't know, but it can happen, and it happened to me, is, and I learned from it, is being giraffe, which was someone just repeating the words. They weren't really there with you. They weren't really holding the space, as Denise brought up. They weren't, um, you know, making an, not even making an attempt to connect, because that can be a stressful struggle, too, but it just wasn't a flow of that, and they just felt like if I think they believed that if they just repeated the words, the job was done. So I think, how do we connect on a deeper level? But again, it comes back to how do we connect with ourselves on a deeper level? So it's, it's genuine and not even that it's, yeah, it's genuine, but what comes from that genuine connection is that there's a rippling effect. And then we all are given permission to, to be in that space of vulnerability, of not knowing, of, um, you know, I don't have the answers. I'm not here to fix you. I'm not here to fix myself. I'm, just, I'm really here to let's dissipate all the mixed, confused, you know, thoughts and emotions that need some clarity so we can, you know, and then I want to say get the job done. <laughs> Very task-oriented. But, um, you know, what? what is the goal? What's the outcome? So I wrote just a tiny little thing, that, and I... I'm even going to add more to it. I wrote empathy equals being grounded equals being connected. But I'm going to add at the beginning, you have to be mindful. And mindful is not a cognitive process necessarily. It's a thoughtfulness. It's being considerate and thoughtful of yourself. And when you know what that feels like, then you know what it feels like. Or I know. I'm going to start speaking from I. I know what it feels like to be inconsiderate and unthoughtful of others and then what it feels like to be on the receiving end of that so which we all have that experience so let's go back to our experience what i want that what i want to um you know pour that on others you know no so i take all negative ex i don't take all but i'm getting better at taking negative experiences and saying wow i I hope to never do that to someone else. So it's that thoughtfulness that in, cons in being considerate on a deep level that helps me understand I don't want that for another person. And how do I promote something different? Okay. 